Hello everybody, it's Charlie with 4BZ Truth. I'm just uh, wanting to do a little rant about near-death experiences. I was just thinking about something. Um, I was actually thinking about a friend of mine that I interviewed, uh, Brian Hoyland. Um, now, I actually haven't talked to him, but he was not in good health the last time I talked to him, and he was pretty much uh, not capable of uh, sustaining his life if he uh, kept going as he was. Uh, I guess he needed a liver transplant or something. Anyways, that the reason I was thinking about him is uh, I often think about like people that are you know, so adamant about their near-death experience that they just think that that is more real than this reality. And uh, I wanted to touch on that just for a second because I, a lot of the people that uh, think that they have a, a, an understanding of near-death experiences and what they represent are often the ones who haven't had them, such as myself. I actually, uh, I'm not saying I have a handle on what near-death experiences are because it seems like most uh, experiences are coming across from a different angle. And uh, I didn't want to say one one is uh, more legitimate than another because who's to say that all of them aren't legitimate or maybe all of them aren't like are not legitimate <laughs> so I don't know I'm just trying to figure out uh, you know where the patterns are and, and what uh, what that would look like but um, so what I thought about was uh, you know I was listening to uh, the Jeff uh, I don't remember Jeff Mara or something podcast uh, he, he was uh, interviewing this guy that was saying that uh, it's basically one of those like all near-death experiences are deception and um, it, you know <clears throat> who am I to say that that's not the case uh, but there are a lot of patterns that point to you know the matrix or or the the simulation um, you know uh, the holodeck kind of uh, deal where you're you're stuck in a in a mind uh, trap or uh, you know you, you believe that you are somewhere that you're actually not and uh, I thought that it was interesting uh, to consider you know you know and I've talked to forever conscious uh, truth seeker channel and uh, you know he, he says uh, the same thing and you know that we're in this uh, prison or this uh, this loop uh, where we're reincarnating and dying and reincarnating and dying and reincarnating and dying and we're stuck in this loop because we keep going to the light and then the light is what uh, causes us to be deceived and uh, you know I don't I, I don't like to embrace that that thought process because number one how can I validate it without dying myself uh, the other thing is um, you know if there are a lot of people that come back and say yeah I believe that I was being deceived everything's up for interpretation so uh, I just don't know who to believe on this um, you know the Bible has a lot of uh, clues in my opinion that basically show that there are things that will try to deceive you. And uh, and they're warning us about su such things. And I thought, okay, well, if, uh, if we're being uh, warned that we could be deceived, then who's the one warning us? According to the scriptures, it's, you know, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, the 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 godhead that is warning us or the true god or the god of all gods the the king of all kings so you know if they're comparing if god is comparing himself to other kings you know obviously there are rulers and principalities that you know even paul talks about in ephesians 6 there are rulers and principalities that rule the darkness or even rule the the, the altar, you know, the other realms. So, um, now this uh, video is not intended for, for you to be mindful of the, the possibilities necessarily. I'm just trying to point out that I'm just a, 
the, a guy that tries to analyze things and try to fi find tries to find patterns. And if uh, if I can identify the patterns, I'm just going to embrace it and try to make sense of it. Um, now, you know, I was thinking about Brian Hoyland and and how he and I were talking about this very topic. Like, how do I know that what you're saying isn't just a figment of your imagination? And he says, it was more real to me than anything else. So it's hard to dismiss that. Um, but he basically admitted that there is a possibility that there's some sort of twisting or interpretation that might be taking place uh, that might be favoring his, his perspective which he's like one of the most honest guys I've ever known, to be honest with you, because, uh, you know, a lot of, he's a deep thinker and he was a former, uh, free, uh, uh, Masonic guy. He was a 32nd degree. And, uh, he actually was telling me that there's a, just a lot of things that he just doesn't know. And he doesn't want to project himself like he knows everything. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate, you know, when anyone's willing to do that. A lot of people just pro project themselves like they know everything. And uh, anyways, so <clears throat> the the point of this, uh, to kind of wrap up, I don't really want to make a long video, but I'm just, I, I really appreciate the near-death experience uh, perspective, whether uh, it's trying to validate their own beliefs or not. I actually feel like a lot of people are just trying to regurgitate whatever they figure out, uh, however their brain, you know, unravels the mysteries uh, after they come back from their their near-death experience. And sometimes you just can't explain it. It's ineffable, <laughs> you know. Uh, every time I, I remember that word from H Howard Storm, it's ineffable, you know. Uh, all I know is... You know, the the devil is the, you know, creator of confusion. And a lot of times when I venture down these roads, I, I feel confused. And, uh, you know, then again, I, I, you know, I think that uh, to unravel the mysteries is, is like the... I, I forget exactly how Solomon put it. It's like a proverb. Um, you know, it's for kings to search out the mysteries... Or something, I forget exactly what it was. But if you guys are uh, into the Bible or the scriptures, you would understand or know where I'm coming from on that. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to search out the matters, right? And one of my favorite speakers slash teachers uh, just passed away, uh, Rob Skiba. And honestly, I want to continue to carry his uh, venture uh, in any way I can. I'm not going to, you know, carry out the seed project or whatever, but... I'm definitely going to be uh, can, continuing on and, and beating the pavement in areas that I can uh, focus on and I can control. So, anyways, uh, just wanted to uh, give you some stuff to think about. And uh, I feel like this is an important topic and I think people should continue to think about it. Because um, obviously there is something happening. There is something happening on the other side whether it's a deception or truth. Um, and we have to be able to discern. And that's another warning that the Bible gives. You know, you have to discern spirits. You have to understand what your place in reality is. And if you don't, you could e be easily be deceived. So that is, honestly, this is the crux of my channel, trying to point out what is truth and what is deception. So I believe that there is truth in near-death experiences but you have to sift through and discern so I don't know what that is necessarily and I say I don't know because I don't I can project my belief or I can project my bias but I do I really know nah I, I just I'm trying to figure it out still I believe that Jesus was uh, coming to unravel the mysteries for us as long as we follow his footsteps and uh, be obedient to the Father. And that's, that's kind of the, the crux of the matter. I believe the Father is creator of everything through Jesus. And, uh, yeah, 
I might start losing people if you're not religious. But whatever. Who cares? I'm just trying to do what's right and what, what's right uh, in as far as I, I can unravel the mysteries. So, Anyways, I'll just leave it at that. Maybe I confused you guys more with some of this stuff, but maybe I gave you more to think about. Who knows? But hopefully I gave you more to think about. And um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you should. But uh, again, I'm under the radar uh, with YouTube. So uh, go to Contemplating the Cosmos YouTube channel and subscribe there. Because honestly, um, I need to get more people over there because I want to start... Well, I've been adding all my live streams to that, but I, I don't do these little rants on there as much because, um, you know, I just, I need, uh, I just need people to go over there because I'm not as scrutinized over there. So, all right, guys, have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.